everyone, this is Mindy Egan and welcome back to my channel. This video is a part of the Hero Arts 2022 mixed media release from their summer catalog and it is filled with so many amazing products. I only have a few that I'm sharing with you today but definitely check out the blog and website for more information. The word mixed media tends to scare a lot of card makers. I know it did for me and I'm still very intimidated by it, but I'm dipping my toes in little by little and I'll share with you today my process for it. So if we just take it step by step, you can really create some amazing either mixed media projects or cards. The first thing I'm gonna be using is this large distressed block cling, which is the top one on my sheet here. It has these really fun edges to it and it also makes for just some really great backgrounds. Since this is a red rubber cling stamp, I removed the foam insert of my Misty tool and I lined this background stamp in my Misty kind of away from the edges a little bit. And then I picked that up with the door of the Misty. I have some deluxe white cardstock here from Hero Arts, which is super, super smooth, wonderful cardstock. So I put some removable adhesive on the back and I'm lining this up over my background stamp because I really want to make sure I'm getting those fun edges. And then I picked that up with the back of the Misty and now my cardstock is stuck down to the bottom of my Misty and won't move. Since this is such a large stamp set and a big area to add ink to, I found the easiest way to add ink is using a brayer. Now here I have a grape slush reactive ink that I rolled my rubber brayer in the ink pad to pick up the ink, and then I'm applying that to the stamp. Now what's really cool is it does not have to be perfect. You do not have to have perfect coverage of ink. This is a distress background, so it's going to look amazing no matter what you do. Now, after I push this down and open the door on my Misty, look at that background. It's, I love it. It's just such a great background stamp. Now, I thought I'd try and add a little bit more color. So here I have Blue Hawaii that I picked up with the brayer and kind of sporadically added that to the background stamp. This one didn't show up as much. It really just made some of my areas more of a dark purple, but still looks pretty cool. Now for some stamping, I'm going to use these new silhouette stamps from Hero Arts. There is a flowers silhouette and also critters. I'll be using the one on the right hand side with all of the flowers. I picked one of them there and this actually starts to look almost like trees in the background after I stamped my butter, added my butterfly to it, but we'll get to that later on. So I moved my cardstock up using the misty corners so that this can hang off the edge of the cardstock. I am not going to be trimming this panel down because I don't want to lose those distressed edges. So I have my stamp here that I'm going to ink up with that grape slush ink. I thought I was going to stamp off first and do ge second generation stamping, but decided not to. So that's why that paper was kind of hanging in my screen there for a second. But I just went right direct to my paper and stamped this down. So after I did that, I kind of moved my cardstock over and up a little bit and did try to get some second generation stamping out of this. This is really just playing. I did not quite have a plan in mind with this stamp set. I just knew I wanted to use it. Afterwards, I decided this would probably be a lot easier if I just put this stamp on a block. So that is what I did. And I inked it up with some of that grape slush ink. And I'm going to just stamp this around the bottom of my card. So here I just went direct to paper did another one with that second generation. So if you did a darker color of ink, you'd probably get a better impression of that second generation, but I'm really happy with how this is looking. The next thing I'm going to bring in is the new Hero Paste in White Pearl. Very, very gorgeous color. It's got that pearlescent shine to it. And I am using the stencil every which way. And I'm gonna add it in kind of three areas and kind of a visual triangle. And I'm not doing this perfectly. I wanted to have kind of those rough edges to it. I just don't wanna have the line from the edge of the stencil. But when I'm applying that paste, I'm just swiping it through the stencil, making sure I'm kind of having that trail off to fade off sort of. Once I have that applied to my card front, I'm gonna rinse this off in the sink and wipe my palette knife down with a baby wipe. So while this is drying, I wanna show you another new product that Hero Arts came out with, and that is the Hero Wax. They have it in gold, black, and white. This is a wax-based product. It does dry permanent, and they are so beautiful. Look how creamy and gold that is and shiny. They are so beautiful to add to any of your projects. So what I thought would be really fun is adding this to my butterfly. 
I die cut the Monarch Butterfly Fancy Die from White Cardstock off screen, and I'm picking up some of this Hero Wax with just a sponge dauber. Now, I, I have a ton of these um, kind of felt pads or these sponge pads, so I ended up throwing this one away when I was done because it dried, but they are great for adding to your projects. So I'm just picking up that wax and dabbing it around the outer edges of the butterfly. I normally would maybe ink it up with embossing ink and put some embossing powder on it, which you could do for a different look, but this was so much quicker and it dries pretty quick. And just look how shiny that is on that scratch piece of paper. It'd be so great to just swipe this across your background on your card. So here's a closer look at the butterfly and that beautiful shine that's added to the wings. I'll set this off on the side, wait for that to completely dry, and I'm going to stamp out my sentiment. And this is from the Dream Messages stamp set. I have a piece of pitch black cardstock here, and I'm going to prep that with my anti-static powder tool. And then I'm going to ink up my stamp in Hero Arts Unicorn Pigment Ink, which if you followed me, you know this is my favorite way to do white heat embossing. So I'm going to ink that up, stamp that down, but not push too hard because pigment ink can get kind of squishy and thick. So I'm not going to push down too hard and I'll ink that up one more time just to make sure I have a really good impression. And then I'm going to sprinkle on the white embossing powder, tap off any excess, and then I'll melt this with my heat tool and I'm going to have this perfectly crisp sentiment. Off screen, I'll trim this down into a thin strip. Now for the assembly of my card, I'm adding some really thin foam squares, just some foam strips to the middle part of my butterfly. I'm only gonna pop up the middle portion and then I can add that kind of kitty corner on the front of my card. Sorry about the auto focus there for just a moment, but it'll be back here soon. And then I added black foam squares up behind my sentiment and I'm adding that right down in the corner. And that's going to finish up my mixed media card. And that's also kind of my recipe when trying to make a mixed media card is I look for a stencil, a background, a die, and maybe an additional stamp for images or sentiments. I hope you enjoyed today's card project for today and helps you feel a little bit better about tackling some mixed media cards. They really are a lot of fun and just gives you some play time. I will have all of my supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Here are a few other videos I think you might like.